Hi, okay, so here we're going to now discuss the probability of either two events occurring. So, or. So, the probability of either or event occurring. Remember that um, this should remind you of the union of two sets, right? It's either the A union B is an element in A or B or both, right? So, here, the probability of A or B, right, is the probability of A plus the probability of B. But remember that re in sets, you can recall when we had two sets in a Venn diagram, A union B meant the element had to be in A or B or both, right, in this intersection. But if it's in the intersection, it's in both sets. So here, if it's in the intersection in this case, right, we, all, we took the probability of A already and the probability of B. So we counted this one in the intersection twice, right? Because we took the B and the A, which means that I, it already was in the A, I took it. And then in the B, I took it again. So I double dipped. Right, that's what I call it, double dipping. I need to take away one of them, right? I need a double, I need to take away that double dipper. So here it is. So that's why we subtract. Now, sometimes you're not gonna have a double dip. Sometimes it's gonna be like fully over here and this will be zero. <clears throat> it really just depends on the events. So let's go back to Bucky and Satchel. We just love this so much. So recalling from example 10.3, Ducky has a, a standard cards, right? And he wants him to draw. And he, after he draws, he puts it back in the deck. So this is a really important part, right? He puts it back in the deck, which means that that's your red flag for independence, meaning that there's going to be 52 cards on each draw. Okay, so let's find the probability for Satchel drawing a queen. Now, we already did this, right, because it's one type of card, right? So the probability of Satchel drawing a queen is just equal to the four queens in the deck out of 52, which is 1 13th. Find the probability for Satchel drawing a spade. Well, a spade is one suit, and so we have 13 cards in one suit. So the probability that Satchel will draw a spade will be the 13 cards out of the 52. And if we reduce this fraction, it's just one fourth, right? One out of four suits. Now let's go ahead and find the probability for Satchel drawing a spade or a heart. So the probability of drawing a spade or heart by the formula right here above is going to be equal to the probability of satchel drawing a spade plus the probability of satchel drawing a heart minus the probability of satchel drawing a spade and a heart. Okay, well we already know that one suit would be one fourth plus one fourth, and that's just from up here. The spade was one fourth, but again, that would be hearts as well because there's 13 hearts out of 52, which is one fourth. And then minus the probability of drawing a spade and a heart. Now let me go back to the little card picture I put in, in the notes, way up here, there it is. If I draw a spade and I draw a heart, what, where, is the probability of drawing a card that has a spade and a heart on it together. And you're like, you can't. Like, I, it's a heart or a spade. It can't be both, Arlene. Exactly. So one suit can't be the other. However, one type of card could be multiple suits. So if I said a two and a heart, notice that exists. But a spade and a heart, a suit can't be a suit and a numbered card can't be a number card, right? Or a face card can't be a face card, but a face card can be a suit, a number card can be a suit, right? So in this case, a suit with a suit doesn't work. So that is impossible. 
and that probability is zero. So if I go ahead, this is same denominator, add across numerators, one plus one is two, so that's two fourths, which is, on, which is one half. And again, uh, one half is 50%, right? So there's a 50-50 chance you're gonna draw a spade or a heart on the first try. Lastly, it says find the probability of drawing a queen or a spade. So the probability of drawing a queen or a spade is equal to the probability of drawing a queen plus the probability of drawing a spade minus the probability of drawing a queen and a spade. Well, I know the queen, the queen I was given up here as 1 13th, which I'll leave in denominators, 4 out of 52, because I'm going to need common denominator like I did here, so I'm going to leave it as a common denominator there. And so then if the spade would be um, 13 out of 52, right here, and then here for that one. Okay. And then minus the probability of a queen and a spade. So how many cards in the deck are queen and spade? So let's go back up to the little picture. And you can always use this as reference. That's why I put it here. So now let me go over here to the spades and let me look up queens. So if I do this and then circle the queens, I can see that there is one queen of spades out of 52. And you can see now I, why I wanted common denominator, so I could add these two across and subtract. So 14 plus 13 is 17, minus 1 is 16. So 16 out of 52. And we can always put that in the calculator, right? So 16 divided by 52. And then I can always rewrite it as a fraction, 4 thirteenths, or approximately 0 0.30787, or I can move the decimal and put 30.77%. So either one of these is okay. It just really depends on what they, they're asking in the problem. So at least if they ask for a fraction, you have it. If they ask for a decimal, you have it. And if they ask for a percent, they also have it. So let's go ahead and go on for the probability of at least one. The probability of at least one is similar to the probability of none or um, the complement rule, right? Not E because we could see that the probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. And of course I could say the probability of none is one minus the probability of at least one, right? I could play with those numbers. It comes directly derived from the complement rule, right? And then where it's one minus the probability of the event occurring is equal to the probability of the event not occurring. Okay, so in this case above, it says I have an example of uh, whole numbers, 1 through 100, what is the probability of a number at, that is at least 5 occurring? So this means I would have to find the probability of 5 or 6 or 7 all the way to 100. Am I going to write 96 probabilities out? I mean, does that even seem reasonable? No, this is why this one is a really nice one because couldn't I just say it's 1 minus everything before the 5, like 0 through 4 or 1 through 4? Right, and so here, let's go ahead and write this a little bit nicer. So the probability of picking a number that is at least five is equal to one minus the probability of it not being five. So this is one minus the probability that none are at least five. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. That's one minus the probability of, and let me put in brackets. So what's not five, right? Well, that would be the set of one, two, three, four, right? Because the moment it starts on five, it becomes this one, which is 96 probabilities. We're only going to do four. So the this is going to be what? 
Well, how many values in the set? Well, 100. So I have 100 possibilities, but only one digit occurs once. So that means that I have one event that's one out of 100. Right. Or, right, or it could be the probability of selecting a two, which is only one event out of a hundred, plus the probability of getting a three, which is one event out of a hundred, and I'm sure you could see where this is going, plus and then the last one for, and remember we're subtracting this from one because we want to see at least five. So let me go ahead and put up here. So this is the probability of selecting a one plus, or the probability of selecting a two or the probability of selecting a three or the probability of selecting a four. So this is really just one minus, and again, this is the same denominator, so I can just add across numerators, and that would be one minus four out of 100, okay? Which is um, going to be, we could do it in the calculator, or we could just know that's gonna be 100 minus four, which is 96 out of 100. So of course we can reduce this in the, um, in the calculator, so we put, can put 96 out of 100. And, that, and you can also do the original, one minus four out of 100, it'll do it for you. Yeah, and then um, if anything, you could go ahead and hit second table and make it into a fraction, so 24 out of 25. So this would be 24 out of 25 as a fraction, or 0.96, or 96%. So this at least one helps, especially when you have a lot of events occurring in your sample space. So let's go ahead and go back to um, the probability problem. So the probability, I mean, the, the, the garment problem, <laughs> the probability, I mean, in a drawer, there are 10 pairs of socks. Remember, six are white, seven t-shirts, three of which are white. If a pair of socks and a t-shirt are randomly selected, what is the probability at least one of the garments is white? So again, I'm going to have, I'm picking two events, right? There is your red flag. And again, we said that these were independent, right? Because we wouldn't wear socks as a shirt. <laughs> and then um, we see at least one. So we're gonna use a couple of formulas here. So here, if we have 10 socks, six are white, and we have seven t-shirts, Right, three um, are white. Okay, so that's kind of our pieces that we have. So if I build this, the probability of at least one is white. This is equal to one minus the probability that none of the garments are white. So this is really important to understand, is when we interpret none, it means none are white. So if at, the probability of at least one garment is white is equal to one minus the probability that none of the garments are white. Well, if I go over here, if I have 10 socks, right, and six are white, that means four are not white. And here, if I have seven t-shirts where three are white, this means I have four that are not white. So let's go over here. So let's build this. One minus the probability, if none of the garments are white, that means I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna be selecting a pair of socks 
that are not white and a t-shirt that is not white. So socks that are not white and t-shirts that are not white. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, we already said they're independent events. So all we have to do is find this probability here and this probability here and multiply them. So all I need to do is find the probability of socks not being white and then times the probability of selecting a t-shirt not being white. Okay, so one minus. So the probability of going in the drawer and selecting a socks that are not white are four socks that are not white out of the 10 in there. Times the number of t-shirts that are not white, so four aren't white, out of the seven shirts in the drawer. Okay, so, you know, we multiply before we subtract, right? So we're going to have 1 minus, and we can actually just do this in the calculator. Why not? So let's do 1 minus and put parentheses um, 4 out of 10 times 4 out of 7. Hit enter. And then let's make it into a fraction if it can. It may not just because the number may be too jumbled. Oh, but it did. Okay, so great. So this whole thing that I put in the calculator is 27 out of 35, or um, approximately 0.7714, or 77.14%, whichever we need, right? And <laughs> we have them all. So the probability of going in the drawer and selecting two garments, which one is at least white, is actually about 77%. So you have a good chance of going in there and randomly drawing a garment that is white. All right.